How bad is that? Oh, it broke. What happens when you cross load a carabiner to be smashed up against a pipe by going over it and clipping back to the rope? Or we'll explore all sorts of different ways this can happen. But does, how much does that weaken the carabiner? Now, I have some ideas about this and you're just gonna go along for the ride with this. And so we're gonna talk about how we're gonna design this experiment because, spoiler alert, I think the rope's gonna break first. And I suppose none of this matters if it does. Now, to build off of stuff we've done in the past, we have tested sideways loaded carabiners. So if it was smashed up against the wall of something and couldn't go over it before getting pulled, that would break it lower if it was sticking up more than halfway. And when the majority of the carabiner was supported by the beam, then it would break super good enough. We've also cross-loaded a bunch of carabiners and that was interesting that they were a little bit stronger than what they were rated for consistently. And we broke a bunch of carabiners on this channel where they will typically, if you pull them the way they're supposed to be pulled, will break above what they're rated for, which is anywhere from 22 to 30 kilonewtons. This one's rated for 24 kilonewtons, but you can see when it's open, it's rated for a lot lower. And you can see how they break as once the gate gives away, either the nose comes off or it just opens up, that the stress is here at the top of the carabiners or here at the bottom. Now, the reason I'm trying to set a foundation for how carabiners break is so we can understand and anticipate what might happen. What I'm going to do is test this in a lot of different ways, and I think it'll be very helpful to have the same type of carabiner in all the tests. But people wanted to know when I asked in a previous uh, teaser video that they want to see steel and aluminum. And so we have uh, aluminum that have just a flat stock here and more of an I-beam shape. So that'll be interesting to see if one's better than the other. And these are all steel ovals from camp. And they're all locking carabiners. We will have some locked and some not because if the gate is opening while being smashed up against a pipe, I think that is a concern. So let's go over some scenarios and what we could test. If you have a knot here or so in termination eye and your carabiner and you wanted to lock this, then this is smashed up against the pipe. And if you come back here, there's not enough friction to keep it there, it comes there. If you put it here to where the carabiner is loose, you still hit some equilibrium, but it's still levering it. Now, a bunch of people asked about a smaller pipe, which is a super legitimate concern, but now you can see that the knot interacts with that super weird and I don't know how that's going to go. So we're just going to pull on that and find out. But I'm wondering, I guess that is real life, even if it is a sewn termination eye. Now the problem, or, or good thing, is uh, I'm afraid that the rope's going to break first because this in a knot breaks at 18 kilonewtons. I broke it a bunch. It is a Beals Blenium 10.0 nylon nylon static rope, semi-static rope. And it breaks at 18. And if this is rated for 26, and even if it reduces it by 20%, uh, I don't even know if it will, then the, the rope's gonna break first. So one of our options is to actually make more of a loop because a loop, you're gonna get more strength, obviously. And so if we go around a pipe and we go like that, then maybe we can pull like this. And I don't know if you guys think that's a fair test. Otherwise, we could do something with some Dyneema and splice an eye and uh, I know that won't break if I have a thick enough Dyneema on there. This is an 11.4 millimeter blue water static rope. I also just don't think I'm gonna get more than 20K in out of a rope like this and it's super stiff and I don't think it's gonna go around a pipe and do what we want. So how about we just start breaking stuff and chase the rabbit. Oh, well, that's funny. It didn't even break on this side. It broke on the other side. 18.07, just like it usually does. Now, how's the carabiner, since that's what the video's about, is that mostly still works. This doesn't quite close unless you motivate it, so maybe it's a little tweaked. But I found an eye-to-eye -eye six mil spliced Dyneema. So if this is strong enough, I think we'd be able to do a lot of tests with this, but we'll see how it goes. Otherwise, we'll go with like a loop. I think it broke. Oh, that's lower than the rope earlier. Oh, I forgot to put the catcher on again. I put the stabilizer on here this time so it can't go flying. This seems to be doing just fine. I actually don't know what this would break at. It's a very static material and it's also quite thin compared to some of the thicker ropes that we were testing. So I wonder if that has an effect on this. So this part of the carabiner came off of that pin and then once it does that, then it breaks like normal. So the last carabiner was flat stock. 
So let's find out if more of an I-beam shape is going to give us a better result. No, my sling broke! Well, at least that gave us an interesting result. Wow, this thing has permanent deformation. Typically, aluminum will just break once it gets around that level. Fun fact about 12 braid Dyneema is one of the strands doesn't always break and then it ends up pulling through and doing this helix thing. So it's interesting how this broke. So now let's just go up a size. <laughs> so we're gonna take a fresh one here. And sometimes if you can throw it over a branch or a bar, clip it down at the ground and then pull it tight, that is an application. Just make sure you lock it. No! How did that make that carabiner stronger? Okay, it's hard to predict what's going to break. So this didn't go flying. This usually prevents that, and this is freely spinning on this ASAP until it shock loads it, and then it'll lock up. Because I wasn't anticipating to get in the 30 kilonewton range. I wonder if the fatter rope makes a difference. So attached to the brake test machine has the hanger that goes to this rope, goes through this, and attaches to the plywood here, which has always been enough up to this point. So this is rated to 31, but you would think this would be bad for it. I'm just gonna reuse this carabiner and just see what we get out of it. Cool, we broke the right thing. So almost 30 kilonewtons on an already compromised carabiner. I am afraid to try the steel carabiner, but that's never stopped me before. That's as high as the hydraulic goes without a two to one. Well, let's see if this, nope. Oh, that's why. Man, that was so close to breaking. Dang it, I can't get it off. So yes, it does damage them, um, but you're, 40 kilonewtons is a lot. I think most situations is just one or two people jugging and rappelling on the rope. I just think one of the biggest risks is the fact it's pushing up against something and then it can stay open. I guess the other concern and question is if it's a really small pipe or branch, if that is going to weaken it substantially. So let's test these out on a smaller pipe, starting with the first aluminum carabiner that we did earlier. Did what we wanted on the first try. Oh, that is pretty cool. Normally it breaks about right there or right there, but in this case it's in the middle ish. Now let's do the aluminum carabiner with the I beam. The I beam wasn't really any stronger. This is why you lock your car carabiners. Obviously, it's putting stress in the middle of the carabiner. This is made in the USA. Oh, it broke! That is really cool. It worked on a small pipe and lower than the MBS. See how this curves out a little bit. Now, if something's breaking at 26 kilonewtons or even 15, your rope is borderline going to fail first. If you're only repelling, <laughs> I mean, maybe 2K in. If you got two people on there, maybe three, depending on the people. But like, I, I think... I think it's fine. There are other concerns, obviously, with it. It depends how skinny of a pipe or branch you go, but... Uh, if I go with something this skinny and I take it up to 15 KN, wouldn't that just bend this? I mean, that would be pretty cool for a video, so we might just do that. I'm also really curious about if, if I can get the same carabiners to break lower because I used a skinnier sling. I don't know how much the thick dynema affects this test. We can find that out, but I'm afraid if we tried this with the steel carabiner that this would break first. Let's do a few sling tests and then we'll go to the, the little guy and maybe a branch for fun. Can a branch handle 15 KN? Sick. I didn't know you could do that to aluminum. I thought it would snap first. The sling's not happy, but it's not broken. Oh, the sling broke. At 15.76, this thing almost works fully. Almost. I think we're also learning a lot about slings here. Let's try this next. <laughs> that just looks like a bad idea. I wonder if people really do that. One? No way. No way. 
No way. Uh, that's believable. Mm, that's believable. That's hard to believe. Well, at least the slow mo is cool for this one. Uh, if a rope's gonna break at 18, I don't even know. Like, I don't want to compromise the Dyneema. How is this still working? But what if you put it over a branch? I, I think it would do the same thing. We'll do one branch for funsies though. And then we'll uh, do, whoa, there's some marks on this thing. We'll wrap a rope around here and pull 90 as if you're wrapping the bottom of a tree and the rope is pulled up tight and you use a carabiner to do that. I don't think that'd be bad for a carabiner, but nothing we've done today so far has been that bad for a carabiner. <laughs> Anticlimactic. This thing still works. It broke it just enough so I can't get it out now. What the hell? Uh, do you need a carabiner stronger than that? Okay, don't know how well this is gonna work, but you know, we get the idea. You wrapped around the bottom of the tree, it's going up, it's going back down something, whatever. I'm gonna pull it. We're gonna find out if that's bad for the carabiner. Battery's low on the hydraulic pump. We'll get back to this. We did get close to the breaking strength of this rope. Okay, this is not working that well, and it's it's breaking the rope. So this clearly isn't the weak link. So this one was definitely my favorite result. I'm kind of shocked that wasn't as bad as it was, I thought it would be. Please leave helpful uh, feedback in the comments so I know maybe what rabbit I could chase. I can shoot maybe a short. And if you sign up for the emails, then you won't miss anything because we're posting everywhere all the time. We don't have to make another long out of it. Now this video might attract a lot of rope access, arborists, or even rescue people. I wanna let you know uh, that we have some drill powered pulleys. These are Z2Rs from AWA, and we are the exclusive distributor in the United States. And these solved a lot of problems that I had and they are flying off the shelf. People really like them. They're lighter, more convenient, and it's not like having a suitcase in front of you like a Ronin. You still need PPE equipment with it, just like you do with any power descender. Stick a drill in here, move the drill, hang it off your harness, and you can go up, wrap the rope around the arms, and you can go down. We got an entire video about this, how it works, how it doesn't, and we were brake testing things with it. So you can go check that video out next. Thanks for watching, and let me know what you want to see tested. Cheers.